Hey everyone, it's Katrina Sawa here and uh, with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. I'm in LA today, coming to you from not so sunny LA. It's actually very cloudy and overcast here, so I've got my boots on. Thank God I, I dressed warmly for this quick little trip down here um, because boy, is it freezing in the conference room too. Anywho, I wanted to talk today about perceptions. Uh, a couple people prompted me to do a video like this. Not prompted me, but this morning when I woke up, I was like feeling called to share uh, today. And so I've been taking notes in my hotel room <laughs> about what do I want to say about this? Because I don't want to forget something. Um, so... Um, one person, actually a really good friend of mine, last night brought it to my attention that uh, she said that I don't share, or should, I don't let people in. I don't let people in very well. And, uh, and I think that's true. And um, I think, gosh, we had this whole discussion about where does it stem from? And, you know, what did happen to my childhood and all that kind of stuff. And, and I'm not going to go into that right now. But um, yeah, why is it that I think when I share on Facebook and in, even in my email newsletters, I get more personal in my email newsletters. So if you're on my email list, you have probably seen me, especially if you've been on it for a while. You know, I've gone through a lot in the last six or seven years, and uh, and I do share. I'm I try to share more, but sometimes I've just got so much business stuff going on that I just feel like I need to share the business stuff because you guys need to know, and uh, and that's not how I really want you to see me. So I labeled this live today perceptions. And because I think there's, it's not just about the perceptions you have of me, but other people have of you and that you might have for others. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about perceptions today. And I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see everybody's drawing. Janice and Doris, hi there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and Janelle, I see you. Thank you. And, um, but the perceptions, perceptions can really sometimes screw us up. Uh, and it's just, I know you want to be invited to my live. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can, I can bring you on, sweetie. I know you talk a little bit about this yourself. Um, and, but perceptions can really screw you up if you, where it screws me up, honestly, is finding out what people think about me and then feeling that, oh my God, that's not me, you know, like how, why am I putting off that vibe or how am I putting off that energy or how come that's all they see, right? And then trying to figure out, my brain goes to the how, is like, how can I figure out how to make them see me, <laughs> like differently, how I really am? I mean, you see a goofy side of me sometimes, you see silliness, you see uh, practical, tactical, of course, uh, advice for your business and your marketing. <clears throat> um but and a lot of people, one of the the gal that I'm talking about, and uh, I don't know that she cares if I ta tell her name, but um, she uh, said that, a, and it's true, I hear this a lot from people that they're scared to talk to me um, or they're afraid to come to an event or something or do coaching with me or even come to a call to find out more because... And what they say is that it's like, well, I'm not ready or I, I'm just when I'm ready, Katrina, then I'll come or or whatnot. So ready for what? <laughs> ready for more success? Ready for more clients? Ready for um, the perception, I think, is that I'm going to make you work really, really hard <laughs> in your business because people tell me it's like how... All, probably every event that I go to, I get five or six people saying, oh my God, you do so much. How do you do it all? Or how do you, you're everywhere. How do you travel and have a life? And you must not have a life. You must work really hard. That's not the, I don't, I do work. <clears throat> I do work at my business very diligently. Yes. Do I work hard at it? No, because I love it. So it's not hard. Um, do I work long hours? 
occasionally when I've got something I really need to get done or if I'm traveling for a week, then yeah, the couple days prior to the week that I'm traveling, yeah, I'm working hard because I don't work when I'm out of town. I don't, other than a few Facebook messages or client emails and texts and stuff, I don't take calls, I don't do calls, I don't do webinars, I don't do anything for my work when I'm out of town. So when you see me out of town, I'm fully present in what I'm doing. So this, today and yesterday, I'm in a mastermind uh, with one of my mentors, and there's about 60 of us here, and we're all masterminding in our businesses, and, and I love, love, love this group because it's very authentic, and there's a wide variety of entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, the guy who runs it, Craig Doeswalt, is amazing. He does an amazing business. He has an amazing family. He really balances that well. Um, and so I, I now follow and or participate with people that I know have a good heart, right? Like myself. And if you haven't seen me and my heart, I, I open it up more to clients, I guess, um, like my, my clients that I work with really closely in my live big mastermind or one-on-one, -on -one, they see the real me. And so maybe I don't show that as much to the world <laughs> here on Facebook, because honestly, deep down inside, I am so crazy passionate. It is my goal to make it so all entrepreneurs know what the hell you're doing and how to get the business so you can create a real consistent money-making business model for yourself doing what you love. I am so freaking passionate about that. That's why I spit out all these uh, tips and articles and blog posts and videos and do Facebook Lives with other people on strategy and systems and because um, I want to I want to give you as much as I can. And, you know, I realized that some people don't want that. <laughs> you know, uh, I see a lot of my friends doing events with hundreds of people, right, where I don't have hundreds of people at my events. But they're like, they've got this hypey, hypey um, marketing, right? It's like, oh, come to this event, these celebrities, wow, 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 you're going to get inspired and motivated and you're going to learn all these tactics. And But they don't really always, not all of them, but a lot of them don't really teach you the nitty gritty, the how, right? They teach you the what and the why. Have you guys heard that? <laughs> and they maybe teach you a couple things. Oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, but they don't teach you how to do it, right? So you go off and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go do this. And then you don't because you don't. <laughs> and so, but so I have had, and this is something that's hard for me to share, I've had this, um, uh, I don't know if it's jealousy or envy. It's like, why are they going to the, her, their events and not coming to mine? <laughs> okay, I said it. <laughs> I've had this for years, you guys. And uh, so if you think I'm all that and a bag of chips and I'm perfect and everything's roses over here, it's not. <laughs> I mean, yes, I'm extremely happy in my life with my husband. He's freaking amazing. He's so supportive. He's home right now, probably feeding the dogs and, you know, watering the plants and cleaning the kitchen and, you know, doing all the things to make the house run and the dogs taken care of plus work and, and he's starting his own business now, which is super exciting. And, uh, but I have huge support systems. I have huge support systems, not only in him, but I have um, like a team of three to, I don't know how many virtual assistants. Um, I, I have three, <laughs> but two of them have other people that work for them. And so I've got lots of people, right, doing various things in my business. So while it looks like I'm everywhere and I do all this stuff, I have team, you guys, and this is what happens when you really build a bigger business. Now, some of you are saying probably, well, I don't want that big of a business. I don't want all that pressure. Well, it's not pressure. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Some people say they don't want to come to me because they don't want a big business or they don't want um, to work that hard or, or they may not say that, but I can tell they, they, they feel that. 
They don't want to work hard. Um, they don't want a big business. They don't want employees. Well, you don't have to have employees necessarily. You have subcontractors and they only work for you the time that you need them to work on the things that you need them to work on. And so I just thank God every day for my team because there's no way I could have the consistent revenue generating business that I have and the, but the, and have the perception that I do all this stuff, right? And I do, I do a lot of stuff. Um, because I'm a typical entrepreneur, just like a lot of you probably with ideas coming out the wazoo, right? I've got ideas for this book and ideas for this event and I want to hold another of this and I want to go here and I want to, you know, do a collaboration with some, a couple people this year. And I got ideas. Oh my gosh. And the other day I just created like three different eBooks, right? Cause I was teaching people this content over and over and I'm like, duh, I need to put it in an eBook with, you know, maybe an audio or something like that. So I mean, yeah, I do, I do a lot of different things, but they're all, um, there's always a bigger purpose. There's always a bigger purpose. And I always take time out for, uh, family, for, uh, free time, vacations, uh, and travel, like I said. So I do have, I have an amazing life, um, is it where I want it to be for, no, it's not where I want it to be. Am I content or, or happy where it is? Yes, but I want more, right? Just like a lot of you, you want more, you want more clients, you want more money, you want more satisfaction, you want to make more impact, you want to um, create a massive movement, perhaps. Um, some of you just want to, you know, make a little bit of money. Whatever your goal is or your vision is totally fine. Um, but there's, it is, it's totally fine. And you don't have to work hard. So the perception that in order to have a bigger business is you have to work harder and longer hours is false. If you do it in a way that can build your business around the kind of life you want to live rather than fitting your life in business and say all the time. Because I have clients who want to work 20 hours a week. I have clients that want to work 10 hours a week because they have a J-O-B still and they're trying to get out of the job. Um, so they can only work five to 10 hours a week max, right? And that's working on the weekends and, and evenings where it doesn't really give them a life. So there's just, um, let me go back to my notes because I'm probably rambling and I want to make sure there's some things. So some other things to think about in regards to perceptions is, you know, there's a, there's a lot of marketing out there and it's funny because, um, the enviness uh, or the jealousy about other people having more people at their events than me and why them and not me and la 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 that this head trash that I've been dealing with for years and years and years um, is also about the marketing part and I'm you know an expert in marketing but there's all kinds of different marketings uh, there's the messaging there's that hypey hypey that makes people take action um, and I I feel like I'm more of a practical, tactical marketing girl where um, I share the reality of what you need to know and the la la, but not everybody wants that, you know, and I struggle because it's like, what well, you have to give them what you, you know, sell them what you want, sell them what they want and give them what you need. Right. So I should probably switch that, but it's, it's, I can't help it. I want to teach the how of how to do all this stuff that you need to do in order to get a bigger business. Um, I love, love, love that. Uh, I love teaching people. I love having the, I love seeing a client just have this huge aha, like, oh my God, I had no idea. Did, that is so easy. Or blowing their mind on something they can do on their website to make their life a crap ton easier, right? I love seeing those, those simple, I call them simple, but they're huge ahas to clients. And, and that really makes me just that that just warms my heart because that's what I'm here to do is make it easier and for you to, to grow and all that. Um, so I guess what I want to say about the perception of people out us that are marketing, right. Is that, um, and who you're following is really, you want to tap into your intuition a little bit more. I didn't do this. I didn't really know to do this in the beginning in my business in the first five or six years. I just kept following all these 
people and come to find out that not everybody was as genuine on the inside as they looked on the outside. Not everyone was making the money that it looked like they were making on the outside. And so you, I really had to learn how to decipher, decipher um, who to listen to, who to follow, who to model after. And um, I, uh, if you ask me any question, I am like an open book. I will answer any question, anytime, um, and I don't hold anything back. You know, people ask me at my events, "How much are you making, Katrina?" And I'll tell them every. <laughs> I'll tell them this year I made that. That my the, the year before I made this, and this is why. You know, and so I think it's important to really be careful and and tap into your gut of who you're looking at. Um, following in a way and I don't just mean following like on social media I mean like following and investing in and learning from because there's a lot of people teaching stuff strategies that aren't as long-term consistent uh proven business models they're fly by night or maybe you'll make the money but you have to be in the top one percent of doing it um, so just be careful, you know, following, I, I just hate it when I see people wasting time and money in the wrong places. It breaks my heart because I want them to succeed faster. I, I have people tell me that don't work with me that'll come back like six months later. Oh, I had to go get a job because I didn't, I couldn't make the business work. Well, that's because you didn't let me get my hands on you. <laughs> And I say that with love because, oh my God, I can, I can show people exactly. Anyways, it's not about me. So, okay. Um, the genuineness though, there is a lot of disingenuine people and I know I'm not going to name names here, but I, people, my clients will ask me, Hey, I'm thinking about going to so-and-so's event or I'm thinking about investing in this program. I'm like, mm, I would rethink that. And the perception is out into the world is that they're an amazing person and they're so giving and generous and then behind the scenes and I know a lot of behind the scenes they're not nice to their staff they're not nice to their event staff they're bitchy and uh they yell at them. they don't treat their assistants well yet they'll come out and like everything's great and, da -da 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 -da, and they've got this mask on and I'm like whatever like if only people knew right I hate that I hate to see that and there are people out there like that you guys so be careful be careful who you who you work with. I don't want to scare you off of everybody, but tap into the intuition and really ask the hard questions of these people. Um, who's really happy? The perception of being happy, right? There's a lot of people that really look happy on their marketing and on their videos, and oh my god! And then on the scenes, they're like, "Fuck, this is a shitty day." Or you know, like, I've had those. I've had those days. And, uh, sorry, I cuss. When I get really passionate, I cuss. Uh, <laughs> um, I used to wear a mask in probably when I first started my business, I was married to my starter husband and I wore this mask when I went out to networking events because people would say, how's everything going? Katrina? I'm like, fine, everything's great. Oh my God. And, and then I would go home and I would literally cry myself to sleep every night because my husband at the time did not support me, didn't even really know what I did and wouldn't come to events where I was speaking or even networking in the evening after he got off work to support me at all. Didn't, you know, he would just want to go to work and come home and eat dinner and go to bed and go to work and come home and eat dinner and go to bed and all that stuff. And I'm like, look, I got, I got bigger dreams. I want more. And so for two years, I really settled is what I call it. I settled for not happy and not being supported. And it really hurt my heart. And um, when I finally uh, left that marriage, oh my God, I was so free. I was free of negativity. I was free of people not, you know, that, that energy suck <laughs> that we have. So, um, you know, yes, I was I wearing a mask for a couple of years longer? Yeah, because I had a hole in my heart then. I was like, I was looking for love and I wanted um, to have that love. And, and for me, I have to have that kind of relationship. I have to have a relationship, basically, that's really supportive. It just feeds my soul, right? And then it makes me shine more in my work and what I'm doing. 
And so um, don't deny yourself of that. Don't, don't settle. Life is way too short. Um, it's, it's way too short, short to settle for anything less than what you really, really super want. Okay. I highly recommend that you, I mean, I get people that say, when I have conversations with newer type of entrepreneurs that I've, you know, just met is people will say, well, I can, I can tell my intuition's really good and I can tell that they're really not happy over here in their personal life or something's going on with their significant other or whatever, but all they want to talk about is their business. And I'm like, so that's great now. We could totally do that. But what about this over here? And they're like, well, I'm not going to, you know, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm good with it. I'm really focusing on my business right now. So they shift back. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. Like, you're going to attract so much more clients and business and your business is going to grow if you are happy over here. Right. And they're, they don't believe me. And I'm like, yes, yeah, it's, it's so true. I've been there. I've done that. I've seen I don't even know how many hundreds of clients come through in the last 17 years who were unhappy in their personal life. So um, please take a look at that. The perception, like we're, we're looking at you, when we're looking at you, a lot of us can see that settling. We can see that unhappiness, even though you're putting on a smile and you have a mask on. We can see that you're not completely happy. Therefore, we don't necessarily totally trust you, especially if you're saying everything's perfect, okay? So faking it in that regard is not a good strategy because people can see. We can see you, right? And it's better just to be out there and upfront and honest and let it all hang out. Honestly, I mean, no one's perfect. I am so not perfect, um, but... I know what I know and, and I do what I can um, to get where I need to go. And in fact, okay, so the other perception, uh, so that I'm extremely busy. We talked about this, right? And either people will say, well, I know you don't have time to talk to me or you don't have time. No, that's not true. I have time to talk to anybody who is motivated to build a successful business. I have time for you. I will make time for you, okay? But you gotta be motivated. You got to be ready to really work on your business and um, being an entrepreneur is not for sissies, right? And I want to work with people who really want to make a bigger impact, but make some money doing it um, and want to learn the how so you can make it easier on yourself. Um, okay. And then the other, oh, the other perception I hear is um, I've got it easy now, right? Oh, well, you're so successful, Katrina. You've been around for so long and you're doing so well. And I'm like... Well, okay, I do have some good, I have some level of success, yes. But am I where I want to go? Oh, hell no. There are like leaps and bounds of things I want to do. And especially financially, I am not where I want to be financially. I do well, but you know, with Jason, my husband, starting his own business now, we've invested in him and his coaching. And yeah, he's not using me to coach. <laughs> He has hired another coach to help him start his business because that just makes sense. Come on, people. <laughs> Spouses sometimes should not be too close like that. Uh, and so, but every year, probably since I got that divorce back in 2005, you guys, that was 14 years ago, almost every year I've had something in my life happen, like literally. So when I hear people saying, oh, well, I can't do that because of this excuse, or I can't do this because of this excuse, or this came up, so I have to back out, or this came up, so now I can't come to your event, or whatever, 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 whatever. I mean, I, I hear it all the time. You guys are just making, yes, life happens. I get it. And of course, there's a lot of bad things that happen, and we have to work through them, yes. But if you don't like set up the business um, with systems and team and structure and the right marketing and business and all that before some things happen or even during because it's not going to stop. There's no perfect time to to develop and grow a really successful business. There's no perfect time. Zero. There's no perfect time. It's not this.
it's over. It's not next spring. It's not a year and a half when you retire from your job. There's no perfect time because something else will come up. I almost can guarantee it, unfortunately, right? And every single year, something has happened to me. But I don't let it get me down. I, I mean, some things are really stressful. Like when Jason, my um, husband, when we were engaged, he, um, well, he proposed at one of my events actually in 2013. Was it 13? 14. 14. 2000, 2012 we met. And um, 2013, I had two total hip replacement surgeries, you guys, right? In case you didn't know that. One in January, one in uh, December of that same year. And it was buy one, get one, right? I had to do it before that. <laughs> insurance wise because they're expensive so I just I had to do it anyway so I thought well why wait till the next year and pay it full <laughs> I actually literally got a buy one get one hip replacement in 2013 it was pretty funny um but so I was kind of out like a couple times and I was very immobile too so that was the year actually that started the me gaining weight okay and I've gained probably 15 pounds over the last every year since which is driving me crazy and I'm working on right now so uh, that's a whole nother video <laughs> but uh so then I was just recovering from that last surgery and it was like April of 2014 Jason proposes at my live event on stage. It was really sweet. We got on video. It was really fun. Uh, and then like six weeks later, he got diagnosed with cancer, throat cancer. And so for the next eight weeks, it was really more like eight months of surgeries and chemo, radiation and all that stuff. I was super stressed. I was like, you cannot go anywhere. I just found you. You're not going anywhere. So I was super stressed because I didn't want to lose this man, right? And I'm going to cry. Thankfully, I did have some systems set up in my business and I had some team and I had the right marketing going out and I had some amazing clients who really all I focused on that year was the current clients I had and maybe getting a few clients here and there whenever I was able. Um, but that was my uh, consistent revenue generating, uh, consistent revenue for the year was the clients that I already had. So, it, I mean, that was a hard year, right? That was a really hard year. And luckily, luckily he's um, passed with flying colors and it's been many years now since he's had cancer. But um, life happens, right? I still had to take care of him and go with him to his appointments, but I also had to still do a couple live events. I canceled some of my trips um, and speaking gigs and stuff, but I still had to go to one or two of them and had some friends step in to help him out while I was gone um, and take care of the dogs and all that, or I had one dog at that time. Um, but the, you know, you gotta do the things you gotta do. And, and my thing with going, I'm really good with reacting to crisis or situations and not everybody is. I get that. Some people tend to not be able to take charge. I'm, I'm a take charge, um, reactor. I, um, I, I work, get into action mode and I take care of business. Like, Oh, what do we need to do? Okay. I'm very much more productive actually when I'm under the gun than if I'm just la 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 sitting around, I'm not productive then I need to be under the gun in many situations and so <clears throat> um but then okay so then finally woo, we get through that year and we actually got married and and this will be our four-year anniversary this year this summer um which is amazing um and why was i telling you this <laughs> oh it's talking about life happens and uh i hear excuses all the time all the time and it just breaks my heart because people don't have enough belief or trust that they can do it or that it'll work out. And whether they have the don't have the belief or trust in themselves or they don't have the belief or trust in their abilities, maybe they're new and they think they're not good enough yet. Oh, it just breaks my heart because you, you are. You are good enough. You will make it work. You have to trust. 
and believe that it'll all work out in the end and that you are an expert and that people need you. And keep in mind, there are billions of people on the planet, you guys, billions. I say this all the time at my events. There's billions of people on the planet. And how many do you need? You only need this many to make a successful money-making business out of billions. So to think that you need to get hundreds of thousands of people coming in your doors, you don't if you have the right business models and strategies. You don't. You don't have to compare yourself to this other person in your industry who's doing amazing things or has 600 people at their event like me. <laughs> um, you just have to do what feels called to you and what you're good at and, and the right people will come. 100% of the right people will come to you, right? But if you're not getting vulnerable enough and putting yourself out there enough and and offering yourself and your services enough to enough people and talking to enough people, it's not going to happen for you. So you've got to believe. You've got to believe that it's it really is possible. Um, and you can't let your you can't let life get in the way. I trust me. That's not even the worst of the, the stuff that's happened to me. <laughs> okay. I mean, then my dad died. Let's see. And then my mom's husband died and she fell a couple times. She was living alone. She fell. I had to fly out to Vegas a couple times one year because she fell and she was in the hospital getting surgeries and I had to take care of her and hire caregivers. And oh my God, like I wasn't ready for that. Right. And, uh, and so I, I'm not good at working when I'm out of town, away from my office. I need my computer. <laughs> I need my stuff. And uh, so, if you know, you just have to rely on your systems, your structure, your team, your marketing, your um, your consistent clients that are in there. And uh, if you don't have that stuff set up, oh my gosh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be harder. Right? I want to make it easier. So when you see me talking about setting up systems and doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that, it's to set your life up for more ease and success faster because oh, things can happen. Right, I talk about a three-year entrepreneur evolution plan and I have this little roadmap that I teach, uh, give out at my events. And people say they have it on their desk. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. Uh, but they follow it. You know, the first year is the bumpy ride. Whether you're brand new in business or you're seasoned trying to ramp up your business. You could be in business for 10 years and still not have a consistent money-making business giving you a life where you can take off for a week on vacation. I've had clients come in where they haven't taken a vacation in seven years. And we figure out how to restructure their business and then and do things a little differently so they can finally take a vacation because you're going to burn out. If you burn out, we were talking about that in the mastermind yesterday here in LA. So many people, it was like huge topic of burnout. And there was like 60 people in the room, I told you. And almost everybody had a story about burnout. It was insane. <clears throat> so how can you set yourself up so you don't have burnout because I know you're doing what you love or you should be or you want to do what you love and you want to do what you're super passionate about but you're 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 close to burnout because you think well I'm not making the money yet so I can't hire this person or I'm not making the money yet so I can't do this or I'm not making enough money yet so I can't do that you know ugh, there's just we have to figure out a way instead of saying I can't let's figure out how can you how can you do whatever it is you need to do to, to build your business? And um, yeah, let's see what other things have happened. Oh, I've been in hormone hell for the last four years, okay? Oh, my God, adrenals and thyroid and progester progesterone, testosterone, whatever the hell it is, estrogen. I don't even know what all this hormone stuff that I've been, I've invested 10, a couple, probably ten to $15,000 in homeopathic stuff for me to improve my stuff. And then they tell me, okay, well, the thyroid, here's all the stuff you need to take for thyroid, but you got to stop the stress. You can't have stress or it's not going to go away. And I'm like, well, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> going through cancer and surgeries and, oh, I had a toe surgery in there too. And, <clears throat> um, you know, and, uh, I'm like, how do you stop stressing? And my husband stressing, and now I can't wait till he gets in his job because I don't think he's gonna stress as hard. But because uh, that affects me, right? And you have to protect your energy. But uh, you know, okay, so I can't lose weight because I've got this thyroid issue. The thyroid issue isn't gonna go away until I stop stressing. 
thanks for putting that into my head, people. Like, <laughs> really? Uh, so I've been dealing with this mindset shift around that for a couple years now. And um, I finally just said, screw it. I am going to lose the weight, whether I'm stressed or not. And, it, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to lose it. Screw it. And so I'm trying some things right now to do that. And uh, it seems to be working. So we'll have to, I'll share that later when I have some success to share with you. Um, but I just, the excuses, oh my God. They drive me crazy and they break my heart all at the same time. Because I know that so much is more is possible for all of you watching. There's so much more that's possible. There's so much more possible for me. There's more possible for all of us. We can all have what we want and live our life. And hi, Cindy, she talks about uh, living your love, your love your life and all that kind of stuff. And Dusty, thank you. And Holly, oh, hi, friend. <laughs> I don't know. I've been ranting, I guess, for 20 minutes now, and I'm starving. I need to go eat something. Um, I just, I guess I'm just talking about perceptions today because I feel like the per some of your, perhaps, perceptions of me is false. And I wanted to share that I'm a woman and a human just like the rest of you. I get emotional. Things happen to me just like the rest of you. Things are hard for me just like the rest of you. But I choose. I choose differently, perhaps. I choose to focus on the good. I choose to focus on my faith in myself. I choose to focus on revenue generating uh, activities even when times are tough, I choose to push through the the roadblocks, the barriers, the the shit that happens, the shit that hits the fan. I choose to push through. I choose every once in a while I have a bad day, I'll wallow for a day, and then boop, I'm back up. Okay? So you can choose too. Life is a choice. Everything you do is a choice. And I just want to encourage you to choose you, choose you, choose what you want, choose your mission, choose to be happy fully in your relationships with what you're doing, with the people around you, the people you choose to be around you. Please choose happiness, choose success, choose having faith. You can decide to wake up every day in a positive light, regardless of the negative people that could be around you, you can choose. Now, if you choose to wallow, if you choose to put excuses in the way of your success and your financial freedom, then I don't know if I, I can't help you. If you choose for more, if you choose to love your life, if you choose to build the business around the kind of life you want to live, not fit your life in around your business, I'm I'm your girl to help you, show you how to do that. Um, and uh, I can't read all your comments because I'm crying and I can't see. Oh, another thing, my eyesight's going. God dang it. Like, why is this happening? <laughs> okay, I just turned 49. Um, I really need to invest in glasses other than readers because this is driving me crazy. <laughs> You're amazing. Such an inspiration. Thanks, Holly. Oh, have a self-care day. Ron Real, we live you. You mean thank you. <laughs> Just be love. Oh, thank you. That makes me feel good. Now that I'm crying and I get to start my day. <laughs> um I need to go mastermind and figure out something fun to do in my business. I don't know. I don't know. I'm here to inspire others, not just. Anyways, I love masterminding. That's why I developed the International Entrepreneur Network. Here's the marketing side, you guys. <laughs> so uh, I just want to help more people. I really do. So in case you didn't see that I started the International Entrepreneur Network, you guys, please come join. There is more rawness, more realness, and more 
reality check strategies and tips and things that you can do to really start appreciating and loving what you're doing, setting up those systems. And uh, I'd love to, I'd love to mentor you however I can, whether it's one-on-one -on -one, in my Live Big Mastermind, at one of my upcoming events, or in the International Entrepreneur Network. I just want to figure out where you're stuck, what your challenges are, what's missing in your in your sales system, in your marketing system, and how to fix it. I, I'm really good at that, you guys. I'm really good at seeing what else is possible and seeing the holes. And please, uh, if you want to check it out, go to iEntrepreneurNetwork.com, the letter I, EntrepreneurNetwork.com. It's $7 a month. And we can be on Zoom three or four times a month if you can make it. There's, they're all different times of the day and time zones because it's international. And we have clients from, or we have people in it from all over the world. And it's growing fast. So I'm excited. I want to just want to help more people. And this is the way that I thought to do it. Yes, I have high-end clients and people that pay me lots of money. But I'm doing this $7 a month um, network because I want to help anybody. You cannot have an excuse for $7 a month, period. If you have an excuse why you can't join for $7 a month, you need to get some mindset. I got some mindset coaches for you that I can refer because you need to shift that. If you need to shift that quick because that is going to slow you down forever. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. And one more thing. Okay, so doing video. This is speaking, you guys. I'm talking about speaking in your business, speaking to grow your business. Right here, this Facebook Live is a speaking gig. <laughs> so if you are doing Facebook Lives, make sure you have a strategy. Yes, my strategy today was a little broken and I was a little over the board with my squirrel notes, okay? But um, it wasn't about the strategy. It was about being real and I really just wanted to connect. Um, but I also am always marketing <laughs> because that's what I do. So uh, I, I, you got to have a strategy, whether you're speaking on Facebook Live or you're speaking on a teleclass or a webinar or a radio or podcast interview and you're a guest or you're a host, uh, whether you're live in person, on stage, all of it is speaking. Speaking is, pro is the number one strategy that brings clients in these days. Um, for me and a lot of my clients <clears throat> and I just want to help you <clears throat> be more efficient with it more productive and monetize it more so I have an event coming up at the end of June you're welcome to come I would love it it's a smaller event like 30 to 40 people um, and it's really the nuts and bolts and the the key things you need to set up prepare for. Um, it gives you that confidence to go to know what you're speaking on, how to go get booked, and uh, so many different moving pieces because I see speakers um, failing in their offers and in being prepared and coming with order forms at live events and all this stuff. So anyways, go, go to the page if you're interested uh, and come to the event. It's jumpstartspeakerevent.com, jumpstartspeakerevent.com. It's my speaker success boot camp, and I've been doing it for like three or four years. Anywho, that's what I got for you today. Hope you have a wonderful day, you guys. I'm now almost going to be late for my meeting if I have to go get a breakfast. So, um, But I wanted to share as much as I could. And please comment and tell me if, if there's anything I can do. Ask questions. I really want to be a resource for all of you and, and a friend. And I want to collaborate and so reach out if you want to talk about anything I you know I'm not up here on this pedestal that you can't touch me it's not like that it's you know as like you can see I'm, I'm just like you um, someone who's passionate about what they're doing and trying to reach more people with their message and you know so and enjoy my family in the process <laughs> all right guys have a wonderful day thanks for being here Love you. Bye. I can't turn it off because Aaron's in my way. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can't turn off my video. Hold one second. Or just, you can go away with me.
can't turn it off because I have a little chat head sitting in front of it right now. <laughs> okay, let's see. There we 